How'd they get the feather to cooperate like that? And for so long. This is a bus stop, right? Because that bus stops for barely a full second before moving on without even seeing if Forrest wants to get on. I know he's sitting there like a gump on a log, but at least do a verbal check. He's literally waiting at the bus stop bench. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So deep. So profound. So meaningless. Seriously, as much credit as this movie gets for its notable quotables, the sentiments are so bland as to not actually mean much at all. Each quote is a bit different, but ultimately at their core contain the same syrupy, sweet, empty calories that makes you feel good for a moment, but do nothing to make you stronger overall. You know, like a box of chocolates. I bet if I think about it real hard, I could remember my first pair of shoes. She said they was my magic shoes. So yeah, apparently, according to the movie, Forrest was about seven years old before he ever got a pair of shoes. Yeah, he needed special braces, but the movie's suggesting his mother only ever put socks on his feet up until this moment, and that's just a lie, yo. Now, when I was a baby, Mama named me after the great Civil War hero. Forrest narration. Forrest station? He started up this club called the Ku Klux Klan. Yes, let's address racism with a lighthearted, simple misunderstanding of a childlike adult. This movie basically points at things and says, look, that exists, and then just moves on like it did something important. He's gonna have to go to special school. There must be something can be done. Well, your mama sure does care about your school and son. Prostitution. Vacation? Where daddy went. Vacations when you go somewhere and you don't ever come back. Can we all just agree that the fact that Forrest didn't grow up to be a murderous psycho is a goddamn miracle? Some years later, that handsome young man who they called the king had himself a heart attack or something. Or something. Slate's taken. This movie wants to bully so hard that this little f***er said seat's taken, even though there wasn't a seat available there. That seat already has two riders. You can't sit here. Why do all these Alabama kids hate the new kids so much? I don't even think half of these fools even saw his leg braces. They're just bullying him by default. F***ing Alabama, man. Are you stupid or something? Ladies and gentlemen, the romantic lead. Forrest very clearly takes a rock to the eye here, but for some reason bleeds from his forehead. For the record, these bully f***ers straight up stoning Forrest are also trespassing. This movie Roadrunner's hard, y'all. Like, a comical amount. He was a very loving man. He was always kissing and touching her and her sisters. Is it possible Forrest Gump is the most offensive movie ever made? I'm asking because I think Forrest Gump may be the most offensive movie ever made. Pray with me, Forrest. Pray with me. I implore you to keep running now and pray later. Ten years and these bullies haven't upgraded from rock throwing? Lazy bullies are lazy. The truck goes from inches away from hitting Forrest to 40 f***ing feet behind him. And this movie won the Oscar for best film editing. Holy now, it used to be, I ran to get where I was going. Since we are entering minute 20 of this bench narration, I think it's safe to say this is basically going to play out like a book on tape from here on out. So, let's just throw on 15 narration is as narration does sins and move on, shall we? He must be the stupidest son of a bitch alive! Wow, this movie utterly delights in Forrest's mental capacity. Plays it for jokes and everything, even while wanting to use it for sympathy whenever necessary. Welcome to We've Edited Tom Hanks into All the Historical Events, and hey, isn't that cool, the movie. This film wants you to know it's the kind of movie that will go directly from Tom Hanks drying his junk to showing an actual shooting in mere seconds. With a level of whiplash going on, I'm surprised J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller haven't shown up. So Forrest Gump shows up at her college unannounced, sees her in a car with a boy, and decides the boy is too aggressive. And maybe the boy was. And then Forrest intervenes, which angers Jenny and scares off the boyfriend. And I have written a dozen versions of the sin about Forrest being a creepy stalker, but I'm mostly baffled that this still somehow ends up in him getting a hand job. President Kennedy met with the collegiate All-American football team. Considering we've already seen George Wallace on the school steps, which happened in June of 1963, and the All-American team is chosen in December, there was no way Forrest could have met JFK here when he had already been assassinated the month prior. Now the really good thing about meeting the President of the United States is the food. It's true. I've heard the hamburgers are fabulous. I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. Not physically possible. 15 Dr. Pepper 20 ounce bottles is 300 fluid ounces, which equals 8.8 .8 liters. Yet the average human bladder reaches capacity at just over half a liter. My point is he could have been peeing the entire time he was in the White House, and it's still mathematically impossible for him to have drunk 15 Dr. Peppers. Also, Dr. Pepper. I believe he said he had to go pee. Someday soon, when deep fakes have ruined our ability to trust anything we see and sent our world into a fiery Armageddon, can we please remember it was Robert Zemeckis who led us there? After only five years of playing football, I got a college degree. The NCAA. Saints take it. Take it. This scene is meant to echo that earlier scene when he was a child and everyone on the bus hated him but Jenny. And I'd like to accept it, but there is no reason given why folks on this bus would shun or hate Forrest. They don't know anything about him at all. My name's Forrest Gump. People call me Forrest Gump. I'm not a smart man, but I know a roll credits line when I see one. Nighttime in the army is a lonely time. You can take either nighttime or in the army out of that statement, and it's still true as f That is the most obvious W being used upside down in place of an M I have ever f***ing seen. How many rows must a man walk down? 
There's no microphone and no amp or speakers or monitors. The stage show either routinely has audio or it's a lie for a movie scene. Forrest, acting like he is Jenny's bodyguard and sole protector, is kind of somethingist, right? She's even yelling, Forrest, let me down right here. If she wants to sing naked, f off, Forrest. I love you. Forrest, you don't know what love is. I'd give back a dozen sins if he'd break into song right here. I wanna know what love is. Why does the army send new soldiers to the front lines via helicopter and two at a time? It seems like a huge waste of gas and time and money and gas. Nah, I don't know much about anything. Forrest is still telling this story on the bus stop bench, right? So why is he whispering all of a sudden? Little bit of stain gang rain and big old fat rain. Rain that flew in sideways. After sitting through the types of shrimp and now the types of rain, I'm beginning to think they added a half hour to the runtime just by listing things. What is this, BuzzFeed? Hey, folks, all the shrimp you can... Eat. Red Lobster called. They'd like you to stop using their main form of employee recruitment. Looking forward to getting a letter from her just as soon as she had the time. Jenny gives zero shits about Forrest all movie long until the end when she's dying and desperate. I think Jenny is the worst, man. I mean, the movie could easily have been subtitled, He Survives This and This and This and This. This is Hacksaw Ridge 20 years before Hacksaw Ridge. He just keeps going back to rescue more and more dudes regardless of his own safety. I moved, but then I remember I'm in an extended Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire music video, and I let it all go gliding down the river of dreams. That's all I have to say about that. So, we're done then? The only good thing about being wounded in the buttocks is the ice cream. Damn it! I know Greenbow, Alabama is a fake town and all, but does it have two different zip codes? Sure, he could have accidentally wrote the wrong numbers, but I'm guessing that's an error the continuity department would be more likely to make than Forrest. Now the secret to this game is never, ever take your eye off the ball. <laughs> Forrest is mostly played for laughs here, but in this ping pong advice moment, he takes it to heart, and it's adorably hilarious. I choose this as the moment I will remove one sip. You listen to me. We all have a destiny. Nothing just happens, it's all part of a plan! Gary Sinise is absolutely killing it here. The problem is that he isn't our protagonist, and he's barely in the movie. Instead, we're stuck with a protagonist who is a glorified narrator and an unreliable one at that. Hanks is fine, but he exists around the moments of the movie, but never really engaged in them, leaving me uninterested, and just wishing I'd seen the Lieutenant Dan movie instead. Where were you hit? In the butt talk, so I'd kinda like to see that. Did I miss the part in history class about LBJ being a creepy perv? What the hell? Earlier, the news said LBJ was giving out four medals of honor. President Johnson awarded four medals of honor to men from each of the armed servants. So why do I count five with gum? This dude's middle name better be coincidence or else I'm gonna kill a bunny. There was only one thing I could say about the war in Vietnam. Well, there's only one thing I could say about the war in Vietnam. Movie is almost two and a half hours long and this is why. In Vietnam. With an event this big, are we really saying the sound situation was a set it and forget it kind of thing? How is no one even watching the soundboard? Can't hear you! Can't hear anything! That's the right on man. Character says something compelling and extremely meaningful, but we can't hear it because of reasons cliche. Please! Jenny! These two are f***ing magnets. Wherever he goes, there she is. It's almost as though someone wrote their lives as opposed to them happening organically. Even the Washington Monument is giving the one finger salute to this contrived and convenient reunion. Our purpose here is to protect our black leaders from the racial onslaught of the pig who wishes to brutalize our black leaders, rape our women, and destroy our black communities. I think it's safe to say that nuance is not this movie's strong suit. He should not be hitting you, Jenny. The most important line in the film is one of the most forgotten. Sorry I had a fight in the middle of your Black Panther party. Thing I said to Ryan Coon after my feud with Jeff Goldblum got physical and somehow spilled over into a nearby soundstage. Anybody want to go to San Francisco? I'll go. Far up. Drugs. Forrest, we have very different lives, you know. Yep, he makes smart choices and you keep f***ing up. Why are you so good to me? You're my girl. I'll always be your girl. Damn it, Jenny! You'd do more for his betterment by disappearing than continuing to show up every few years in super coincidental fashion to help keep his pipe dream of being with you alive. I got it, just by doing what you told me to do. This is not true. Not in a literal way and not even in a simplistic forest way. She told you to run away when there was danger, and you most certainly did not do that. In fact, it took three different people in the moment to tell you to run before you even started. Not to mention, you technically won the medal for saving the lives of members of your unit, and not actually for running away. But hey, got a shoehorn in that running metaphor, right? Ping Pong proceeds to propaganda proportions without properly petitioning participants' previous political positions. When I got home, I was a national celebrity, famous or even in Captain Kangaroo. For playing table tennis? Quick, name one great ping pong player in the history of mankind. Exactly. In the land of China, people hardly got nothing at all. 
No possessions? I don't have the time to show you the entire setup and punchline of the rest of this manufactured nonsense, but basically through questions and answers, Forrest Gump helps write Lennon's Imagine, because nothing is sacred in this movie that wants to be profound and ends up feeling more like one cheap SNL sketch after another. Not using the crosswalk in a city this big, on a street this busy, in icy snowy conditions is worth five f***ing cents. The selfishness is through the roof. Have you found Jesus yet? No. Knowing this movie, I'm sure we'll find out that the Sermon on the Mount was actually about how Christ appreciated all of Gump's attributes and wanted to pass them on. You can start all over. Everybody gets a second chance. Well, unless you're famous, then your chances are virtually unlimited. Get out of here! <laughs> Prostitants. Look, sometimes companies go overboard in pitching potential spokespeople, but this is a lie. No one is making multiple standees and Gump-branded paddles of this number on the hope he agrees to sign. Which everybody knows isn't true, but Mama said it's just a little white lie, so it wasn't hurting nobody. Advertising in a nutshell. Fishing. That lowercase e is going to haunt so many people, myself included. So Forrest's boat survives this. Seriously, there's more suspension of disbelief that has to happen in this one movie than the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe combined. I haven't seen someone look this out of place with a gospel choir since halftime of Super Bowl 53. Right then, God showed up. Equating the weather with God's will. I never thanked you for saving my life. Still haven't. But at night time, and the house was all empty, I'd always think of Jenny. Are we supposed to be rooting for this love story? just seems like a bad idea on so many levels. And if not, what are we supposed to be rooting for? Gump's basically just accidentally himself into being a famous millionaire time and time again. And I just don't know why I'm supposed to care about any of this. And then she was there. It's almost like the script itself has given up on coming up with reasons things are happening. The screenplay is sitting in the corner smoking a cigarette, saying, F*** it, I've had enough. You just fill in whatever blanks you want. And then she was there is about the best I've got left in me. Jenny came back and stayed with me. Maybe it was because she had nowhere else to go. Or maybe it's just how codependent relationships work. Sometimes, I guess there just aren't enough rocks. Like the rest of the movie, this line isn't half as deep as it wants you to think it is. It actually doesn't even make any sense. She told him she wouldn't marry him and hurt his feelings. Now, hours later, she's gonna sleep with him. Jenny is an awful human being in this movie. Oh, right, and then she leaves! I am never gonna be Team Jenny. I'm not running. Get it? Because she said running, and that's the theme of the movie. That automatically makes it super intelligent. I swear this movie is all chicken soup and no soul. And he just left his front door open, and no one squatted or looted or anything over the next however many years of him running. Probably the hardest to believe thing in this entire movie, honestly. For more than two years now, a man named Forrest Gump. As much press as Gump has gotten from his ping pong, Medal of Honor, shrimping business, and this run, is it really possible that he could sit on a public bench and not be recognized by someone at this point? This whole Forrest runs for a few years part is just worthless. Yeah, yeah, run Forrest run and all that, but there's no real point to this. He doesn't meet anyone, doesn't really grow as a person. They literally needed something for him to do for a few years before he gets to gump into Jenny again. Have a nice day. Well, some years later, I found out that that man did come up with an idea for a t-shirt. No, uh-uh, no. Man, we've been through four presidents since the Watergate scene and Gump hasn't aged a day. Fake newspaper article headline accidentally sums up everything I've been thinking for the last two hours perfectly. Also, in Jenny's scrapbook of Forrest clippings, as she called them, there's an Inquirer headline, Go-Go Dancer says Forrest Gump made me his secret lover. And you will never convince me Jenny herself didn't give the interview that led to this story during a time when she needed cash. Probably for drugs. Ah, baby Joel Osment! I have some kind of virus and the, the doctors don't... I don't know what it is. She means AIDS, right? This movie is just the kind of movie to maybe sort of want to make a reference to AIDS, but also wants to pull its punch so it doesn't offend. Kind of like how they never want to talk about Forrest's actual diagnosis or condition. It's just slow, stupid, not smart. Let the audience draw their own conclusions. I'll take care of you if you're sick. Would you marry me, Forrest? What the f***? Literally the last scene, she told him he was a father and said, there's nothing you need to do. Now she's proposing to him. Even when she's trying to do something good, Jenny makes terrible decisions. Not one of these prick bastards gave up their seat for the guy with the prosthetic legs, or even walked over there to the left and grabbed one of those black patio chairs for him to sit in. He's got to stay in the entire ceremony. And then in the desert, when the sun comes up, I couldn't tell where heaven stopped the earth began. This literally started a few moments ago with her asking him, were you scared in Vietnam? Just FYI. You died on a Saturday morning. Except that Jenny's tombstone says she died on March 22nd, 1982, which was a Monday. So suck on that, Gump. Uh, I mean, sorry for your loss. I had you placed 
Yeah, under a tree. I didn't get any kind of cemetery permits or nothing. I make sure he combs his hair, brushes his teeth every day. If this movie were made today, it would be about some snooty aunt trying to take custody of the child away from Gump and him having to get a scrappy lawyer to go to court. And the bitchy aunt's lawyer would ask, do you seriously think you are fit to be that child's father? And Gump would proudly respond, no ma'am, I am that child's father. You're so smart, Jenny. Is he crying? Are you crying? There's no crying in Gump Ball. Seriously, this is basically the only emotion we've seen from Forrest the entire movie. But why now? Sure, Jenny died, but so did his mom and most of his military unit. Why is he suddenly an emotional being when for the last two hours and ten minutes he's basically been the emotional equivalent of a parking meter? I don't know if we each have a destiny or if we're all just floating around accidental like on a breeze. Maybe it's both. Great, so the movie's big message is ultimately a double negative. Everyone has a destiny, and also no one does. The end. Why is your footlocker unlocked? You wanna see the most beautiful thing I've ever filmed? My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive. Cool guys don't look at explosions. This is Wesley. Oh, my sweet Wesley. What have I done? If you're ever a shrimp boat captain, that's a day I'm an astronaut. This was my call. Must have been a tough one. I'm sailing! I'm sailing! Quiet. Quiet. He's gonna say something. There's a snake in my boat.